This is Twit. Researchers have found a fix to unlock computers infected with WannaCry, that weak old ransomware that's affected systems all over the world. The tool called WannaKiwi allows you to avoid paying the Bitcoin ransom, but only if you're running Windows XP, Windows 7, and Windows 2003, and if you haven't rebooted your PC since the attack. The key is not magic. It's math, my friends. It works by finding all the prime numbers that are stored in the ransomware's code. So there was another uh, key that came out, one a key that came out yesterday, but that was only for XP, I think. Uh, so this this one, and that one required a second app, but but this seems uh, like it would work if you haven't rebooted your PC. What do you think, Ian? Well, there's the rub if you haven't rebooted, because when you're caught by this sort of thing, the initial reaction is, turn off, turn off. So you've instantly wiped the the, the keys that's stored in memory. At the same time, it's, it's very handy in terms of, you know, it's good that we have these kind of tools being developed to deal with this. Um, it's a fairly limited use case since it's likely that most of the systems that were infected have been turned off and then turned on again. Um, the traditional way of dealing with all computer problems, of course. But, um, I mean, it's it's an indication of how much smarter the security industry is getting on these. You know, the previous one, a key system, it worked on XP, but to be honest, there weren't that many XP infections it's now emerging. Because, you know, the original exploits weren't working on on XP in 2003 systems. When it came to using the worm to spread stuff around, they had to spread through open network shares. But at the same time, at, the, at this point, any port in a storm, because the infection rate has been so large that, you know, people are willing to try pretty much anything to get their data back. And I guess, you know, the time is, the clock is ticking. You know, they said that they would... What, was it a week? I think it was a week, maybe. It's been a week since oh, it happened. Yeah, a week today. It started to kick off around about, probably about 5 or 6 a.m. Um, Pacific time. Uh, then the first infections kicked off in Russia and then in the Middle East and then Europe. And, of course, our own National Health Service got, got heavily hit. Then they spread to America as more people started turning their computers on. And it really went global. I think the total country count is now up to 112, but... That may actually be you know, still still growing at the moment. Yeah, I read 150 different nations, 300,000 computers. So, what do you say? I had my I had a a family member uh, who texted me and said, you know, am am I vulnerable to WannaCry on my Mac? And you know, I part of me wanted to say. Yes, you're always vulnerable. <laughs> like I didn't want to say <laughs> no, but I mean you're really not. It's just really it's mostly mostly Windows Seven computers. But I mean, what do average what 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 do you recommend people say when their relatives um, ask them what should I be yeah. worried about? Well, I mean, unfortunately, you're right. Apple users can be very smug about this, which seems to be the kind of like the default setting for a lot of Apple users when virus stories hit. But you know, if it's it's purely a Windows system problem. Um, it's mainly hitting Windows 7 because Windows 10 was was fairly well covered. XP it wasn't going to spread. To Server 2003 it wasn't going to spread. Server 2008 you might still have a problem. Um, the the key thing to do is just patch. The patches are out there. They've been out there for 60 days before this malware even started to circulate. So if systems are fully patched up, then fine, you're okay. Um, there are you know the NSA or whoever it was who had these particular exploits out there on the web have got in contact with the manufacturers and had patches ready to go pretty much from the first time the shadow brokers leaked the exploit information in the first place. So patch, patch, and patch again. Um, as it turns out, we've now discovered there was some news out today that, in fact, the initial vector for this malware wasn't people clicking on infected attachments, which is usually the way it goes. What they were doing, what the malware operators were doing, was scanning for open ports using the SMB protocol and pushing the malware onto those. So traditionally, when you get a malware infection, it's because someone's got an email and without thinking, clicked on an attachment. And it's been tremendously frustrating this week having a number of PR companies sending in sort of, oh, we have comment on the on the WannaCry um, situation, and they're enclosing it in an attachment, which we're supposed to click on. And you're like, yeah, it's not really how this works. <laughs> But uh, but this, it was a question of network shares initially and then open network protocols. So if you're, a, if you're a consumer user, just patch. That will solve the problem instantly. If you're a, an IT administrator or network operator, make sure you've got port, port 445 taken offline in terms of the open-facing internet. Make sure you patched up properly and warn your users. 
just make sure that nobody does anything stupid in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I wanted to say. You know, no, you're not. Um, you're, you know, your your Mac or they also ask, is my iPad, is my iPhone vulnerable to, to this? But I also want to, you know, you. I also wanted to say, like, but still, don't open attachments from anyone. Don't open Google Docs from anyone you don't know. You know, there was the DocuSign hack. Don't don't open DocuSign anything. <laughs> so you know, you just you don't want to say like, oh, you're fine on a Mac. Do whatever you want. Open whatever you want. Oh, no, I mean, the, the, the general rule I take is if you receive an attachment on an email and you don't know the person, then just bin it. If you do know the person, just ping them a line saying, did you send me an attachment? And if so, what's in it? Mm -hmm. Because it may be that their computer had been taken over by malware and it was pinging out spam, you know, malware laden attachments without their knowledge. If they haven't actually sent it to you, then, you know, just leave it well alone. So always check with this sort of thing. And hopefully we're going to get to a point where, you know, we're going to get rid of attachments altogether just store everything on a secure cloud server and bring it down from that. But as you said, with Google, you know, the, the, the recent Google hack demonstrated that that's not entirely safe either. I mean, if you're dealing online, you've got to accept a certain amount of risk. And it's all about avoiding being the low-hanging fruit and being a little more security aware.